Your handwriting is so much better than mine. I know. It's not horrible. The best handwriting. <laughs> mine is chicken scratch. Hey guys, it's Riley and welcome to my channel on this lovely Trans Tuesday. Today I am joined here with my really awesome friend Max. He is here and we are going to do this video together. Stop winking. <laughs> he's never been with me to film a video before. He doesn't know how my process works, but he's gonna find out, aren't ya? Either way, we thought we'd talk about our gender journey and basically how we figured out we were trans and things related to trans things. He is also a trans guy, which is super cool and I'm really excited to be here filming a video with a another trans person. Without further ado, let's get into the video. The first thing we're going to talk about is our self-discovery and kind of how we realized that we were trans. I was a very angsty emo teenager. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I went Still through the seed phase. I'm not emo. And when I was a child, total tomboy, even though gender roles have nothing to do with you being trans. Like, you could be, have been the girliest child and still be trans. Which is basically the story of my life. I was a typical boy as a kid. I loved Pokemon, of course. I still love Pokemon. <laughs> I love Pokemon cards, video games, any sort of video games. He basically loved like all of the traditionally like masculine childhood things. I wasn't, I didn't play sports, but I love the outdoors. I love snakes, spiders, bugs, everything. I would collect them, put them in little jars on my shelves. I had frogs in a tank in my room. Uh, my room was of course decorated by my parents, not me. So it was dragonflies and pink and purple and ladybugs. Like they did the traditionally feminine bug theme mm -hmm. when I really wanted like the creepy crawly like bugs. Yeah. Snakes. Yeah. I knew that something was up my whole life. I felt like I didn't really like know I no no I was trans until much later or know that I was like a boy. I knew that there was some disconnect between myself and my body. Like I disassociate a lot. I just didn't feel like my body was mine until I started binding and I started packing, of course, and wearing masculine clothes. I started to feel more like myself. I had dysphoria, but I just discounted it as like the traditional depression. As I grew older, I tried really hard to be feminine, like to the point where I would, was like overly feminine and it was, wasn't natural because I knew something was up. I knew that I just, just I cut my hair eventually as soon as I could, really short, never went back. My mom just kept telling everybody I was a tomboy. I was really unhappy. I mistake a lot of my dysphoria for depression. So as I grew older, I started exploring my gender identity. I felt free whenever I dressed masculine. I felt free whenever I bind my chest. I felt free whenever I was packing. Well, anyway, most of my dysphoria is located in the bottom, so packing was definitely a good thing for me to discover. I just came out actually to my mother a couple months ago, and it's been kind of a fight to use correct pronouns and correct name, but they're now trying their best, and I applaud them for that, and I love it. I love my name, I love my pronouns, it makes me feel good when people use them. I just feel like me again. Basically, for me, growing up, I mean, I knew from day one that I could think and comprehend things, that I wasn't exactly the traditional human being. I was very masculine as a young child, but more of feeling like not fitting in consumed my dysphoria and uncomfortableness into anger. And I was a very angry child and I dealt with a lot of anger problems and was diagnosed with like anger disorders and had to go to therapy for anger, but it wasn't really the anger, it was just dysphoria and me being uncomfortable manifested within that. And later on, like when I came out and we're seeing doctors and people who specialize in trans issues, they were telling me like that is such a huge sign and like an explanation is that you are trans and that is definitely something that could have manifested itself in anger when you were a child. See, he was just mad. I was just sad and yeah, anxious. Yeah, I was very he mad. He was angry. Angry bean. <laughs> I was, I was very, very angry and I would talk, I was just, I was cruel to a lot of people and we know now that that's kind of a reason why because that's the way that my dysphoria and gender had manifested itself. As I got older I was probably 10 or 11 years old when I knew that I was not female, when I knew that I was not feminine identifying and that I knew I was a boy and that I knew I was a guy. I had tried to come out to my parents then, of course they didn't have it, so when I was 13 12 or 13, I tried again, 
and the main thing that sunk in for my parents of when I came out was because I had been binding with an ace bandage and that is so dangerous and you cannot do that and I had been doing that and I was lucky to have you to give me binders yeah so <laughs> some of my old binders since I'm a bit bigger than Max is I was able to give him some of my old binders which is the ones that he uses which is it's great but I was binding with an ace bandage and my dad was like I think that was a reality check especially for my dad when he realized that that was a very unsafe practice and that's when he started using my name and using my pronouns and doing everything he could to help me. We were at Disney World at that point and he ordered me my first binder. The journey with my parents has been pretty long, a pretty long one, but they have been great overall. They have helped me do so many things. They've helped me get my name changed. They've helped I mean, me get would my... you have said that in the beginning? I would not have said that they were great at the beginning at all because they were very I unaccepting that either. and transphobic. However, my parents are very good now. They're very accepting and they're very supportive of everything that I go through. And my journey to self-discovery was pretty easy. I realized I was trans when I was watching the show Degrassi. Wow. And the, sh the character Adam Torres came on and I was like, that's me. Like, that's, that's who I am. And that's actually how I realized my name too because one of the characters on it, Riley, who was gay and I immediately connected with the character. You see, I, I immediately connected with the character and I was just like, that is me, that is who I am and that a name just resonates with me and so that's... The character that. that I always connected with was, I played Pokemon constantly, over and over again. I would start new saves, I would pick different teams for my Pokemon. But most of all, I would always play a guy, and I would always name my character, like, some generic white boy name. And the Is name that where you got mad? Yeah. <laughs> generic white boy names from Pokemon. That's great. And to this day, I still play males in Pokemon. That's never changed. I just, I just felt resonated whenever the characters in the games would call me by he pronouns and my name. So that's basically the character that I related to. Now we are going to talk on the topic of the gender spectrum and where we fall on the spectrum and kind of how people differ. I am honestly close to non-binary, but I am so far on the male side. Like, think of it like this. Here's the boys, here's the girls, here's the middle. I'm like right here, like in the middle of the boys and the non-binary. So for a long time I identified as non-binary or gender fluid or things in that order, but I felt like that just wasn't me. It's okay to change your identity multiple times too. Because it's all you're exploring. It's all a journey of self-discovery. I am very a firm believer that your gender never changes. It's just you a matter of figuring yourself out. So changing an identity is not a bad thing. For me on the spectrum, I identify as transmasculine, I identify as a trans guy. I do not like to use the term female to male because I, I was not born I mean None my of, genitals say one thing but I was a not boy's body even but if like, even if you have boobs out a dress and your little parts, parts <laughs> that's still a boy's body that's still like if you identify still as male, boys boobs exactly like, that's a boy's body exactly I don't like using the term female to male because I don't believe I ever was female, so using the terms like transmasculine is definitely something that I identify with more. But that being said, my personality, as you all probably know, I have a very feminine personality, but that doesn't base itself off of gender. It's my personality hey traits. Boy. <laughs> it's, it's just my personality <laughs> traits. Like, I'm flamboyant. I'm like out loud. I talk with my hands a lot. I am. I have a feminine inflection, but that doesn't determine my gender. I identify as male, I use the he, him, his, traditionally male pronouns, and it's not going to change just because of my personality. I mean, I like makeup, I like heels, I don't like dresses or skirts, but if I was a cis dude, I would definitely, definitely be a drag queen. A drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> I would be the biggest drag queen. Okay, dysphoria before and after coming out. For me, before and after coming out, my dysphoria, before it was just sadness, depression, anxiety. Like most of my depression and anxiety and sadness, but most of my depression was based off of my dysphoria, like mistaking dysphoria for depression. And it caused me a lot of anguish. I've been in and out of hospitals. I've 
attempted suicide more than once until I finally came to terms that that's me being uncomfortable with my body. I mean, I have an eating disorder from it. Like, I felt like if I was smaller, it'd be easier for me to bind, it'd be easier for me to identify it as it without the big hips and feminine, like, shape. I just felt awful. And now that I realize it's dysphoria, I have a word for it, which people say labels aren't good, but I think it really helps you identify. If you don't like labels, that's okay, but don't shame people for using labels. So anyway, dysphoria, it's a lot heightened because I know now what I didn't know before. Most of my dysphoria is centered around my lower body, so I'm okay with my chest. Chesticles. I'm okay with my chesticles. <laughs> I just like to bind because I have small amounts of dysphoria on my chest. Around my lower area, definitely huge amounts of dysphoria, especially with my like facial shape, my cheekbones, my jaw. Even I see those small things and I just feel it could be better. Like, two out of ten could be better. <laughs> Basically for me and my journey with dysphoria is my dysphoria, like I'd said, had manifested itself in anger. So before I came out, I was very angry all the time and I didn't really, I, I didn't really realize what it was. After I had come out, I had started acting so masculine, dressing as masculine as possible, wearing these nasty skater shoes. Like I've talked about this before, and I I'm just those. not in the mood to get into it. And I was trying to be so stereotypically masculine because I was so dysphoric about how I'd be misgendered and how like people I think you would... had some of the gender roles in your head too. I have had gender roles stuck in my head from day one of coming out of that if I'm identified as male, this is how I have to act, this is how I have to sound. I pushed my voice so low. I think there's an old video of me on Vimeo trying to be a vlogger when I was like 12 and it was me, I, I'll show you later. You need to and show me, was... I'll show you my scene face photos and you show me <laughs> that. But I was trying to be a vlogger at like 12 and the video is FTM pre T passing tips. And you were like, hey guys. I was. Hey it was guys. So bad. I'm sorry. I, I think mean, my voice is lower there than it is now and I've been on T for over a year. I mean, I'm pre T, but I don't try to hide it unless I'm like in public. Like when I'm with family and friends, I sound super feminine. But my dysphoria has gone away, especially, not gone away completely, but after I started tea especially, I noticed it going away. Like, I'm more comfortable with myself because I sound more like what I thought I'd sound like. I definitely have a more masculine presentation physically, not just like with clothes or anything. You and got those he's fuzzy feeling chin my stubble because I haven't shaved. Uh, but I feel definitely more comfortable with myself and dysphoria is not particularly an issue with me anymore. And I'm more comfortable. I don't have days where I'm like, ooh, chesticles. I mean, I do, but it's not nearly as bad as Chesties. it was. Chesties. <laughs> Childhood gender roles and how they affected you. Well, as a child, <laughs> heavy, I tried... Heavy topic. I tried to be as stereotypically masculine as possible with my interests. Not really with my appearance, because I just kind of accepted that, because again, there was that disconnect between my body and myself, and I'd often go into a different world. I mean, that touches on mental health issues with myself, but anyway, the topic is really the gender roles and how it affected me. So with dresses, dresses were my worst enemy. Um, I would give my mom dirty looks, I hated dresses, I hated all of it, I just, all my friends were guys and they were stereotypically masculine. I think that rubbed off on me a lot of their interests as a child because they all like Pokemon video games. Uh, playing the Pokemon cards, the animals, like the nasty mm -hmm. little critters, and I think that kind of shaped a lot of my interests now. I mean, with gender roles, they'd ask me to sit like a lady. That was the term I hated the most. <laughs> sit like a lady. Act like a lady. Be a lady. That is harmful in itself to people who aren't even not trans. If you say, even to a cis girl, act like a lady, that's so harmful and that's so misogynistic. And yeah, I would just, like if you told me to act like a lady and I was, and I wouldn't do this. I would. <laughs> like, legs, open, legs wide open. Legs wide open. <laughs> Stop, dude. <laughs> For me, gender roles was definitely tough because when I was a child, I tried so hard 
to be like girls. I would wear pink, I would wear dresses, I would do everything like that. I was into makeup and dress up and all of those kind of things. That was things. more like my middle school years. I was so into it when I was young. But then when I got into middle school, when I started to realize I started to do less of that, I started my emo phase, which is great because the emo phase is pretty androgynous. And so I was, I was, seen. I, I was pretty comfortable in my emo days. And then when I got to like eighth grade is when I started going by my name and by my pronouns and everything. And that's when I tried to be so stereotypically masculine because I thought that's what a guy had to be. And because gender roles were pushed on me for so long and probably up until the beginning of my sophomore year of high school, so it's probably been two years since then, I had just up until my sophomore year, I had thought that since I'm identifying as male, I have to be so masculine and do all of these specific things. But now I'm so much more comfortable with myself and my personality. I don't fit into the stereotypically masculine molds. I'm gay. I like painting my nails, but they're trash right now. I like fun things. I probably like makeup. I don't know. I just don't know how to do it. Let me and teach you, honey. <laughs> Let me teach you, honey. He's I, teach I love makeup. He's teach I you love makeup. makeup. I've got like 50 different kinds of lipstick and different kinds of eyeliner. I've got like a whole beauty shop in my room. Now that I'm more comfortable with myself, gender roles affect me less and less. And I think it definitely depends on who you are as a person and what you're comfortable with and what you want to identify as. Because if you fit gender stereotypes, that's perfectly fine if that's who you are. If you don't like me, that's also fine. So we have since got the hamster and now we're going to talk about how we feel, how we feel now. How I feel now? <laughs> warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> no, warm and um, fuzzy How I feel inside. now? I feel free. I feel a lot better. I feel, I feel like I'm my true self. And it's cleared up a lot of things for me, like why I did things as a kid. And I just have a better connection with myself. Like I'm able to do me time and not feel guilty. And that's so good. And that's pretty much how I feel too. I'm a lot more comfortable and I'm a lot more confident and I'm a lot more happy than I was before I realized my true self and like my true purpose and the hands oh just climbed it up the shoulder. <laughs> so. My my child. And yeah, I think that's all we had on this gender journey video today. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you are non-binary, what kind of things did you experience? Or if you're cis, what have you experienced with like gender roles and stuff like that? If you like this video a lot, you should definitely subscribe to my channel. I post two videos a week. One video is a trans education video and the other video is just a separate video on Thursday. So that's two videos a week coming your way. I am also currently hosting a giveaway on my Tumblr for a copy of Binge by Tyler Oakley. The link to that is below and you should definitely go check that out. If you want, you can follow me on all of my social media, which is at the Riley Kyle. All of my links to everything that I have will be in the description. And if you want to follow Max, you can follow Max. I will link all of his social media below right under mine. And that's it. That's what I've got for you today. Say that's bye, what we've buddy. got to use. My son! <laughs> All right, we're gonna go and play some Undertale now. So that's gonna happen and that's gonna be a fun oh thing. <laughs> and I love you guys and I will see you guys on Thursday. Yeah, okay, bye.